the new two-lane Kōpū Bridge. The $40 million project connects the Hauraki District to Thames and the Coromandel, where it's hoped summer traffic jams are now a thing of the past. Jenny Saw reports. Cutting the ribbon on an early Christmas present for Thames and the Coromandel. <laughs> Leading the way, George Williams, who was also first to walk the old Kōpū Bridge when it opened in 1928. <laughs> It means goodbye to the old one-lane bridge, which caused queues kilometres long. The new two-lane bridge is about 13 metres wide. That's three times the length of the old one, and it comes complete with a walking path and cycle lane. The bridge cost $40 million to build, $7 million under budget. It's also been completed ahead of schedule, so it can be available to the 20,000 motorists expected to use the new bridge every day during the busy summer period. Yes, yeah, so we're delighted. I mean, it's um, six months early, so it's here before Christmas as opposed to after Christmas. Today, locals pack the 580 metre long bridge on foot. They say they're hopeful it will give the region an economic boost. Probably hopefully, but there's a few more bucks down for us. I think it makes it easier for people to get to the Coromandel, so... Yeah, hopefully bring a few more people down. Awesome, it's beautiful. Um, can't wait to drive over it. <laughs> As for the old bridge, it's staying. It's a historic feature. I think there are plans about uh, how it'll be used by walk, uh, people who are walking and uh, cyclists, but it won't carry cars in the future. The new bridge will open for cars on Monday, and while its aim is to put a stop to traffic jams, today's congestion was welcomed. Jenny Saw, 3 News. As mentioned earlier, New Zealand political history has been made with the first profoundly deaf MP voted in Parliament. Christchurch Green Party MP Mojo Mathers will take the 14th Green seat and plans to be a voice for the deaf and disabled communities. Rachel Tiffin reports. For Mojo Mathers, communication via text message is key. Today, finally, came the buzz she'd been hoping for, followed by a flurry of others. Been going crazy with text. Yeah, everyone seemed to be congratulating and stuff, but we are amazing. The Christchurch-based Green Party member was starved of oxygen at birth, leaving her profoundly deaf for life. She spoke to Three News by lip reading. Today's result makes Mathers the fifth profoundly deaf person in the world to reach Parliament. I'm hoping that just by being there in Parliament, engaging with the decision-making process, that there will be. Um, changes that happen as a result of that. She says her mere presence in the House will force change. Says a uh, captaining of debate and I hope that will be available to the wider community so that everyone with a hearing impairment will be able to follow the debate in Parliament. Special votes have bumped the Greens' upper seat in four out of the last five elections. But party co-leader Russell Norman says this one's particularly significant. Making Parliament adapt to mojo will mean that thousands and thousands of New Zealanders get better access to Parliament and that would be a good thing. If that access requires new equipment at a cost, Norman says that cost will be worth it. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, but if there is any cost involved then it means that thousands of New Zealanders get better access to Parliament. At number 14, Mather's seat brings the Greens to a record stronghold, giving them better access to the government too. Rachel Tiffin, 3 News. Jennifer Anderson has beaten off her longtime rival, Angelina Jolie, to be named the hottest woman of all time. The 42-year-old is described as the whole package by the Men's Health Poll because of her funny and down-to-earth persona. The French star is usually seen as unlucky in love since splitting with her ex-husband Brad Pitt, but is now dating fellow actor Justin Theroux. Christmas movies are already hitting our cinemas and to add to the festive fray, another seasonal offering called New Year's Eve. Unsurprisingly, it's about New Year's Eve and set in New York City from the same filmmakers who delivered us Valentine's Day. Here's Kate Roger with Film 3. It's New Year's Eve, bro. We're doing something. It's a time-honoured Hollywood holiday tradition. Sign up a ton of stars for a quote-unquote heartwarming collection of interconnected love stories and set it against the backdrop of a big occasion. Any big occasion will do, Valentine's Day or Christmas. Or how about New Year's Eve? Let's do it! What do you think? 
I get the kids with Zac Efron and that annoying girl from Glee. Throw in some Ashton Kutcher and some Abigail Breslin and then keep the grown-ups happy with some Oscar heavyweights clocking in for an easy Christmas bonus like De Niro on his deathbed or Hilary Swank being Hilary Swank. Chuck them all into New York City on New Year's Eve and cue the millions in holiday box office moolah. There are just two things a romantic comedy needs. One is romance, the other is comedy. New Year's Eve has neither. Heavily ladled cliché, lame and plausible inane storylines, complete with some excruciatingly cringeworthy montages, make this the biggest Christmas turkey in recent memory. It's getting one star, and that's only for the bloopers. Join the credits. Cleansing the palate, let's have a look at our favourite big screen kitty cat. Who's in boots? Is it true, a cat always lands on its feet? Just a rumor spread by dogs. Every supporting actor dreams of a breakout role. Put up your turks. Puss in Boots was always gonna be that guy. Very well. If it is to be a dance fight, then I will choose the night dance fight you to the death. Voiced by Spanish hottie Antonio Banderas, Puss was a favorite for many Shrekies who should be more than happy with this 3D outing. Is it hardy here? Or is it me? A little flat in the middle, but with lots of cute kitty humour, this movie is part western, part Zorro, and all puss. Three and a half stars. That's not what your mama said. At the New Zealand box office this week. You two! What? What? Aussie flick Red Dog at number five. Puss in Boots proves he is a popular kitty, heading straight to number four on the strength of previews alone. The adorable Arthur Christmas at three. No change to the top two this week, Immortals remains in second spot. You've given me no choice! And the Twilight Saga, Breaking Dawn Part One, still sucking the life out of the box office at number one. Film three. I'm Kate Roger. Oh, Michelle's expert sport and Australia have been bowled out. As unbelievable as it sounds, Simon, yes, considering the Black Caps' recent form, they have fought back on day two of the second test, with the Australian batsman looking as green as the wicket in Hobart. Also ahead, who's going to meet Australia in tomorrow's Hockey Champions Trophy final? Local surfer John John Florence hangs the perfect 10 in Hawaii in the biggest waves of the season. And New Zealand climber Mayan Smith Gobert talks about living life on the edge. He was never killed by my hand. Look, 